Now, without doubt, the most popular driver for average golfers in the last two years has probably been this thing, the Ping G425 Max, and with very good reason. But for me, it had some major flaws, and I'm hoping the driver in my left hand, which is the Ping G430, has ironed out those flaws. And that's what we're going to find out in today's video. And without doubt, the biggest flaw for me was this. Oh my God. Jesus, Mary and Joseph and a wee donkey. That thing is like an absolute cannon going off. We've had complaints about my audio in the last few weeks, but trust me, you'll be glad it's turned down because if I drop that microphone any nearer to that ball, your ears would explode. The sound on the Ping G425 lineup was atrocious. Let's just hope they've managed to get it changed this year. And I'm going to answer that question right away because I'm taking this 10 and a half degree head off of this CB Alter 55 reg shaft because of course for this test we need to make sure we've got everything as close as humanly possible to make sure we give them each a fair crack of the whip. And we're going to insert that shaft into the new Ping G430. I'm going to put a ball down and you're going to, uh, like me, hope and pray that Ping have dampened that sound a little. Right, get your ears at the ready. Come on, Ping. Don't let me down. Well, do you know what? They've dampened it. It's still a loud old gunshot going off and even more exaggerated in the acoustics of this place. But I've done some testing outside in the last few weeks and I've got to say, it's a huge leap forward in terms of the sound, not just on the driver, but on every other club in this G430 lineup, including the iron. So well done, Ping. You have solved one of those major problems, but it's only one of them. We're gonna have a look at some drive ball data. I'm gonna hit lots of shots. We're gonna get some comparison in terms of how they perform, like I said, identical in terms of their setup. How do they differ in terms of visually? Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Well, looks was never something that, that I had an issue with with the G425. I thought it looked really good. Just that sort of monochrome look, black and chrome and some greys. From a shelf appeal perspective, I thought it was really, really good. And then you turn over the crown, always voiced by opinion, would prefer not to see turbulators and would prefer to see a flat crown. Having said that, I really like the matte finish. Then the G430, they've added a little bit of color, as you all know by now and can see. Weighting system is identical in both. There's not a lot to change them. There's probably a little bit more going on in the G430. And I'll talk about the shaping very, very shortly, but then you go back to the crown, turbulators are still there and never gonna change. They've had a little more, bit more detail on the crown, which again, I sort of take it or leave it. It's not my preferred choice. I'd prefer to see just a flat crown, but love that matte finish. It's the shaping that seems to have changed. Um, the 430 seems to have gotten a little bit more sort of squashed down. Uh, it doesn't, it's certainly not elongated in its shape. It seems exactly the same at address, but overall just it's a little bit lower, very much like the uh, sort of shallower fairway woods have always done in the ping lineup. And again, I really like that. I mean, there's not a lot to split them. They've only, it's an evolution, if you like, in terms of what they've done, in terms of changing. There's a slight alteration in terms of that profile and only really noticeable when you've got them side by side. So for me, either way, no real gains, no real positives, no negatives in terms of any kind of enhancements into that G430 look. However, I do prefer that flatter profile. But I did say at the start of this video that the G425 had a couple of flaws and that sound is one of them which it looks to have been resolved. The second one being, well, maybe not unique to Ping and the G425, that if you wanted a really super forgiving high launching driver, then there might have been some compromises you had to make in terms of, first of all, maybe a slightly higher spin number, that higher launching ball with that higher spin number may result in shorter carry distances. So overall, a more forgiving driver may not have been one of the longer drivers that you test. And we all know we wanna hit that driver just as far as we can. So can 
the G430, build on what they've got in the G425, keep a spin number down, maybe keep that launch the same, but increase ball speeds and therefore carry distance. We'll find out. And the way we're going to do that is good old fashioned dry ball data. I have got this shaft in. Interestingly enough, I've got uh, the newer shaft. I'm not sure that there's any difference between this year's and the previous year's CB alters, but it is the brand new shaft that's in. And we'll start off with the G425 and we'll collect some data and I'll give you my feedback along the way. Right, okay, that's a few balls hit with the G425. Some half decent results in terms of performance. And let's have a quick look in terms of some of those results and I'll put them in front of you now. So, first of all, ball speeds ranging between 135 and 139 topping out at. We've got some fairly high launching balls there, 17.8, a couple 16.9. Spin number stayed very consistent in and around the sort of two and a half to two eight number. Uh, peak height 40, 37, and uh, then we've got an average carry distance at the moment in those few balls that are hit at least that sort of top one 238, dropping down to 231. To be honest with you, that's a decent set of numbers, a decent sort of performance. 140 ish ball speed at that top end, spin number okay not too high and that carry distance in and around that sort of 230 plus mark, pretty impressive. What happens when we change the shaft out and go to that G430? Now, first of all, the most notable thing is throughout all those shots hit is just that sound difference is uh, so, so much better in this new model. So I can't tell you just how much of a difference that makes to me, at least not to everybody. First, like I said, a few shots hit. Uh, started off with that 139 ball speed, launching at 17.3. What have we got? 235 carry, 27 spin. Good set of numbers. You then go down to shot three and all of a sudden we start to get up to different ball speeds that we didn't see in the 425 and that's 142 and then followed up by 145 ball speed launching lower spinning maintained at a low number uh in that's when you start to see 241 243 carry it's interesting you know because i'm going to carry on hitting balls carry on collecting data there's already sort of in those first four shots, we can start to see some difference, at least in ball speeds for the first time I've ever seen it, is Ping made a claim that this driver was seven yards longer on average than its predecessor. Not many talk about gains in terms of, and certainly Ping don't, in terms of making those kind of statements anymore, but maybe they've come up with something in terms of a balance between launch spin that is creating and the ball speed, obviously, that is creating those further carry distances. We shall see. I'm gonna hit a few more balls and then we'll have that ultimate evaluation, which one of these two comes out on top. But at the moment, it looks like this G430 just might be doing what Ping claimed. Right, let's try one more with the camera on. That's a, a solid ball. We've got a 140 ball speed again, 25 spin, 34 peak height, 239 carry. So once again, in and around that 240 number. We didn't see those kind of numbers with 425. It's looking really good. 
Let's have a look in terms of that dry ball data averages and I'll give you my overall assessment. Well, this comparison video came out of the request that you made, so by all means stick what you want in terms of that comments box below, keep it polite. But if you've got any suggestions in terms of videos that you want to see that might help your buying decision, then uh, please let me know in the comments. Right, we're just going to go straight into the averages on these two. Um, straight away, the one thing you'll notice is that we had an average ball speed jump of almost three mile an hour, which is a significant leap forward. Um, launch angle on the previous model, the 425, was 16.7 and 14.7 on the... Um, on the new model, a G430, spin number down at 2432. Um, so already kind of better combination in terms of launch and spin. Uh, peak height, therefore, the, was a lot lower with the new model. And that overall carry distance, well, Ping reckon they'd added seven yards in terms of extra carry distance. Almost backed that up, to be honest with you. You've got a 232 compared to a 238 carry distance. The thing is, for me, is that what Ping have done with the G425 is that, uh, the G430, sorry, is, is brought a level of consistency across all of the data parameters. And I've seen that with a lot of products this year, which is what seems to have been the focus. It's been consistency across the board, which combined is what gives you that ultimate performance. I did a lot of testing on course last week with the G430 driver. And I've got to say that it's, it wasn't the longest driver that I played out on course. But it was certainly, again, this word about forgiveness, straightest, whatever you want to call it. I never really seemed to miss a fairway. At times it was higher launching with this reg shaft and 10 and a half degree head. And arguably at times when I was out on the course, and you don't know which way around these videos come out, you'll see those and I question the sort of ball flight. But it's also quite nice to see that ball going out there uh, in terms of high launching ball. As long as it's not too affected in terms of it becomes a high spinning ball, then I actually like the ball flight and the ultimate carry distance if that ball speed is there as well. So for me, they've got a real interesting combination this year, this G430. And I don't think this setup in terms of shaft and 10 and a half degree head is perhaps the optimum for me. I think there's some tweaks that can be made to, to change those numbers and improve even more. Um, but what they've definitely done is these things are always only move forward in terms of tweaks, but they've got a nice balance here between what they've done ping between the model from, I suppose, G425's case two years ago. There's enhancements there and they're noticeable, but they're not kind of, you know, they're not going to blow your mind. I don't suppose if you're happy with your G425 and you're happy with the sound of that damn thing, then, you know, stick with it. These videos are purely only guidance on trying to recognize what a manufacturer may or may not have done with the new products they release. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. We shall carry on more testing, more comparisons, more information that hopefully are some form of assistance to yourselves. And uh, I'll see you soon, probably tomorrow night.